And we are live. Welcome, coaches, to another showcast. I'm here with the beautiful John Weaver. John, how are you doing, man? You doing okay? Man, it's great. You know, um, Christmas time is about here, and uh, Thanksgiving was awesome. And, uh, you know, nothing like Christmas, right? You got the tree behind <laughs> Okay. <them. laughs> So first, I want to I want to talk. What did you cook for Thanksgiving? Because when we were in that lockdown, you and I kind of had like a Twitter cook off, like meet up thing. I've gained literally thirty pounds from the quarantine. <laughs> I need to stop. But what what do you throw on the grill, smoke or whatever it is you do? You know, I I let my dad have it this year. Uh, so we smoked a turkey, and we had some uh, like honey glazed ham. That sounds nice. Yeah, sweet potato casserole. All the all the great stuff. Uh, are, you, are you still uh, eating Thanksgiving leftovers right now? You know, I was supposed to take some from my parents' house <laughs> and we forgot it. So I got home and I was like, Kristen, where's the leftovers? So uh, we didn't have any leftovers. That's that's awful. That is awful. Now, for those coaches that are joining us, uh, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, anything that deals with wide receiver drills, um, he coaches has a, a unique way of warming up before games that we may touch on or what the topic is today. We're going to be talking about special teams. I feel I've, I've had a lot of coaches reach out and say, you barely give defense some love and you give special teams no love. And you have a scheme that we're going to touch on a kickoff return scheme that is very, very unique and incredible. But before we get to it, for those coaches that don't know who you are, follow you on Twitter, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, no, no doubt, Ron. Um, I'm John Weaver. I coach the wide receivers at Madison Risen Academy. Um, we're fortunate enough. We went back-to-back -back, uh, state champions this year, which is fantastic. Uh, I work for one of the best head coaches, I think, in the country, definitely in the state of Mississippi, and uh, Herbert Davis and what he does with our kids. Uh, you know, allows his coaches to coach, which that's a big deal. Uh, so work for the best guy in the state of Mississippi, in my opinion. Uh, I'm also the head boys track coach. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you know about the air raid brigade and the things that we do in our wide receiver drills and stuff like that. But uh, got a beautiful wife, Kristen, and two kids, Luke. And a beautiful and tree that she put up right behind you. Oh, yeah. Look, got to give her some love. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you you failed to mention that y'all have won the state championship two years in a row now. Uh, uh, could you touch on, was there anything different from this year besides, you know, the Corona? What was different from this year compared to last year? Yeah, so last year, obviously, we had Phillip Short, and then we had five wide receivers that were just bonkers. Everybody's like, man, you do a really good job. I was like, well, I have really good players, and that really helps, you know. Uh, every coach knows it's on here. Like, you have great players, you end up being a great coach. You have players that aren't so good. You're like, man, we got to get rid of this guy. So, you know, um, this year was a unique year. So last year, we, you know, 12 and 2 or 11 and 2, whatever it was, state champs threw for 593 in the championship game, went bonkers. I mean, that was crazy. This year, um, it was exhausting, to be honest with you. You know, all the COVID protocols we had to do, you didn't know if you were playing Friday night. Yeah. Uh, you didn't know who you were going to have on Friday night with, with who got uh, who got the virus and who contact tracing went wrong. So it was one of those exhausting years, but – I'll say as a staff, our, our head coach, Herbert Davis, I touched on earlier, um, had a plan of how we're going to do it. And, and, and we stuck to it and we lost one game to COVID. And I say lost, we um, didn't work. We weren't able to play that. And they let us know on Thursday uh, that they weren't going to be able to play. But other than that, we went 13 and 0, but 12 and 0 on the field uh, this year. But, uh, you know, it was we had a senior laden offensive line coach Kenny Williams, our offensive line coach. Uh, you need to go follow him. He does some great stuff with his O line guys. Um, but had great O line, and uh, we pounded the rock. And we had had a brand new set of receivers, and uh, and just one day at a time, you you go chop wood and, and get one percent better. I know that's all cliche, but. Uh, at the end of the day, they got better each and every day because they had no game experience. And we went to the state championship game and um, beat a team that we beat early in the season and uh, won 41 to 14. And it was awesome. Everybody thinks we're a speed tempo. We are. We, we speed up the game, Ron. But uh, third quarter, nine and a half minute drive to seal the game away. I mean, it was it was magical. 
you said I I I, I knew last year y'all just slung the ball around. Y'all were more run oriented this year. We were actually balanced more this year than we were last year. Um, and our offensive line play was unbelievable. We went so too tight, and then we flexed those guys out uh, from too tight and went one on one with receiver play and. Uh, had a quarterback come in, Zach Beasley, that did a tremendous job, was Offensive Player of the Year for our, our conference. And, um, you know, it, it's what it is, man. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> back, that's back. Um, the cool thing is, and I might jinx this, but uh, we have a 22 game home win streak and we have a 19 game winning streak, which for 11 man, so an eight man team has more wins in a row this year, uh, leading up to this point. But, um, for 11-man football, regardless of private or public, we have the longest active winning streak in Mississippi right now. Okay. That is nice, and I, you won't jinx it because y'all are the men. So we have coaches in here. Uh, Coach uh, Cody says that you are the man and blessed to have you as a friend. That yeah. That is true. You are the man. Um, CJ, fired to learn some great stuff. And uh, Josh, off-season, what off-season? Let's go, fellas. Knowledge is power. You are absolutely right. No doubt on that. Before we get into the special teams, I do want to touch on your unique pre-game ritual. I'm I'm going to throw ritual up in air quotes. Uh, coming from from this is what I do. I do a little version of pat and go, a little bit of settle up and noose, things like that. And when I said that, you're like, yeah, that's nice. But this is what we do, and you do something I've never heard before. Could you touch on that? Yeah. So I like watching pre-games of what colleges do, what, what other teams do. Just I think. You know, how you fire the central nervous system, especially. So I thought about baseball and a lot of teams take BP, right? Well, there's a reason they take BP and they're working situational hitting rather than just going out and playing a game. And I thought if we're going to be a high, high octane offense to where if we're going to throw the ball, we're going to have to be able to catch the ball, right? Because if you can't catch the ball, everybody knows you go to defense. So um, just like you, <laughs> you got to, uh, teach your children how to ride a bike. You also have to teach the kids you coach to catch a ball. So did some, did some research uh, with some of our teachers um, and like, Hey, well, this helps stimulate, uh, you know, their fingers and, and hand and eye coordination. And, and uh, when, what we do is we go about 10 to 15 minutes out before we even go out for first group. And I kind of told coach Davis what I was thinking about. And he goes, yeah, let's, let's do that. Only if they're catching, like, I don't want them running around. All I said, yeah. no, this is strictly just to catch. So we have a tennis ball group, a tennis ball station, a softball station and a jugs machine. And we travel with our jugs machine and they'll go through and they'll probably be five feet away from me. And I throw the tennis balls at different angles. So they're catching high, they're catching low, you know, pinkies, uh, everybody knows I teach the the U, not the diamond, uh, because of your elbows, stuff like that. So everything's two hands, Ron. And I think that's important because Odell Beckham is Odell Beckham, right? A high school wide receiver. If you can get one, every wide receiver coach that's probably on this show, if you can get one, you can get two. Right? Yeah. Everybody said that once before. So that's what I thought. So we're going to catch tennis balls with two hands, and uh, they'll go through two rounds of that, and they'll get um, twenty apiece. So it's 20, and then they leave me and they come back. So I, on the second round of tennis balls, I throw them a little faster. Um, and they're not as spread out, but they're maybe at their shoulder. Maybe they're right below the belly button. Uh, maybe they're right at their eyebrows or something, so they have to react to it. So, And it's not a catch-tuck with that drill. It's a catch-drop, 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 catch-drop. Why is that? So rapid fire. Okay. They're coming rapid fire. Um, I'm not really worried about a tuck on a tennis ball. Um <laughs> I'm worried about as soon as they catch it, I'm throwing another ball. Um, so they go through two rounds of that. The first one's kind of slow, uh, just kind of getting their hand and eye coordination going. The second one, it's sped up. The next one is we throw 16 softballs. Why 16? Because I only had eight and we're going to do two rounds of it. That's If you want to do 20, do two rounds of 10. It doesn't matter. We do 16. And uh, these are not thrown at you like you're taking uh, BP. You're not, you're not, 95 mile and that wild thing is not going to throw it at you. Um, it's just strictly, and I got this from a coach on uh, Twitter that he was using softballs. And I was like, all right, I got to find out why he's doing softballs. But the circumference of the softball is about the same as the cone 
on a football. And I was like, that's wow. genius. So yes, it is. that's stolen uh, of the, why we use it. But we do that and we're two hands. So this one is a catch and a tuck. So they're bringing it and it's a little bit bigger, catching the tuck, catching the tuck. And we'll go through two rounds. So they'll catch the tennis ball, then they'll go to the softball. And then they go to the jugs machine and we're going to put them about eight to 10 yards away and put it on 65 miles an hour and it's coming. And they'll work their way in and they'll catch 10 to 15. And I'll tell one of the coaches like, hey, give this guy 10, give this guy 15. And some of them are going to want to walk up. And then some of them, uh, some of our seniors, uh, Ray Fenson this year would go and catch one with one hand and he's standing right underneath it. It's it's amazing. But I think that's a huge part of our success of, you know, I, I think I, I go back to the last two games when it was starting to get cold. And I think we had one or two drops and we threw it over – probably 45 times in those two games. So that's, you know, you got to teach them how to catch. And I think you have to do things. They're going to help them be successful instead of just be like, you know, we're going to go catch. So Pat and go and all that stuff. So we do that even before we go out in, in our group. And uh, I've said before with our wide receiver stuff, all the stuff that I do in pregame is stuff that I do in practice with our first two periods of practice with our quick foot and, um, we use softballs to do quick feet and then we'll do the pester drill and Willie Mays catches and all that stuff. We'll do that with a football. Uh, now we've transitioned away from the tennis ball since we catch the tennis balls early, but it's, it's a system and um, I don't even have to be there and they can know how to do it. And I think that's big with high school kids or even college kids is it's all about routine. And once that routine's set, they know it's expected. And um, you know, they never hear me say, catch a ball, it's just like a pitcher. You're, you know, you're not going to want to tell a pitcher throw strikes. He knows to throw strikes. It's just like my wide receivers, they know to catch the ball. So there's always a coaching point there. Yeah. I hate that when when people say this, like, no, part my French, no shit. Uh, they're not yeah. they're not there to drop the balls. Right. What I like about those drills is I always struggle to try to get kids a lot of catches. Like you said, when you get in later on in the year, it gets cold and their hands get kind of tense and they hurt and they always complain but when you do those drills leading up to it you kind of warm up the hands and everything Absolutely. and also i like how you're not running them i i, I fell into that problem like yeah. i would stop halfway through because they're just running and everything I'm like yo guys let's not let's not get tired before the game yeah and everything and that's all we did man like we go they go out in tennis shoes and they'll know 15 minutes you know the the guys that play on friday night and they know who they are uh, they're the ones that come down. So I got six or seven guys that'll come and they'll catch. And uh, some dads film some stuff for us and I'll shoot it to you so you can kind of see. And if there's any coach that wants kind of that routine of what we do, um, man, I'll send it to him. I'll send it to him. Yeah. And coaches, if you want his, where's it at? Where's it at? There we go. I am getting his, oh, that's not it, his Twitter. And I'll put it up there so y'all can get in contact with him. Here is in the chat below. His uh, crap, I took that out. <laughs> His Twitter account right there. Um, we've had some coaches in the chat already talking. Yeah, right here. AJ, what's going on, man? Love the pregame routine. Most coaches are scared to be different with their pregame routines. I I completely agree. Coach, right there, that is gold. You're absolutely right, and fantastic stuff. So that is that is awesome. Uh, let's let's transition. To some some kickoff you you have a a really cool uh kickoff return strategy and um i just want you to do, take it away man bring up the uh the whiteboard and walk us through it i'm gonna go ahead and transition to the board yeah, right there i think this is the one is this it yeah it should be with the l1 l2 l3 and all that yeah. stuff take it away yeah. buddy all right so this is i'm a former kicker punter in in high school in college um and we spent as a staff about, I don't know, about three hours on this thing. And we were looking at the best bang for our buck with special teams. So it's limited. You know, I don't know how many coaches work special teams um, or how long you work, excuse me. But, you know, it's a third of the game. And I was like, oh, if you win the kicking game, you have a great chance of winning. I was like, if you win the kicking game in high school, you have a great chance of winning. Uh, so we're going to maximize this. So, what we ended up doing is we sat in the boardroom and our athletic or in our coach's office and our, our athletic director came in and he goes, what are y'all working on? What offense y'all putting in? And we're like, kickoff return. And he says, well, damn, if you spend three hours about kickoff return, y'all better return every damn one of them. I was like, 
You know, that's a great point. So we researched what Air Force did, what Army did, what, what a bunch of teams do. Uh, Purdue. I mean, we looked at a bunch of kickoff returns as a staff and finally decided on this. And then I started tweaking this toward the end of it. And the more we put it together, I was like, there's always a dude on a kickoff team that is like, the, that's his one job. Like that's his shining moment to, to go down and make the tackle on the kickoff. And I was like, we're going to end up doubling that dude. So uh, I'm going to draw up here. I'm, um, I'm thinking I know which one is the draw line. Yep, there it is. So we set up, guys. You click it again. Because oh. you're about to draw the straight lines again. I don't click it, the, and it's the one on the left right there. There, I want the pin. All right, so just like everybody does, this is going to look so sloppy, but we have the right tackle, the right guard. I'm just going to put the center, the left uh, guard, and the left tackle right here. And I'll show it better on huddle. But this is so, man, this makes my handwriting look. Bad. I'm just glad it looks like that because I don't feel bad now. <laughs> All right. Um, and then we'll have a guy that's a doubler here. We'll have a scraper here. You have your left returner and then your right returner. If I had a mouse, it'd be a lot better. But a right returner. Well, then we had two guys that we didn't know where we could put them at so we put them right in the middle and i'll tell you yard markers and all that stuff but this this would be um our kicker and our sealer and you can you can move these two so we can put the sealer here and the kicker here uh it really doesn't matter but here's what we did and this is the, this is the secret sauce to it i guess but this is this is one of our kickoff returns so uh, you know coaches are always scared to share stuff and all that stuff. this is just one of our kickoff returns that we do um and, you know, I think if it helps one other coach be successful, why not, right? I agree. So what we're going to end up doing is we take these two guys, R3 and R4, and we designate them to these guys. So he'll have R3 and he'll have R4. Now, here's what they'll do. They'll retreat this way, and I'll show you on the film, but they'll retreat and seal inside, retreat 10 yards and seal inside. So this guy's at the 48, and this guy's – Excuse me, he's at the 46, he's at the 48. This guy, based on film study, we're going to either double R4 or R3. So if R3 is a guy that's going to give us fits, we'll retreat five, and then we'll double R3. So we're taking care of those two dudes. Well, now the kit guy, he's going to get R2. So as R2 comes down, he'll get depth and he'll kick. Well, then now you're asking, what about R1? Well, depending on where R1, so if R1 just wants to run his tail down here and say it gets kicked here, uh, we're going to be an extra blocker. We're not even going to worry about him. But if he tries to get in the mix and get in the fold, we'll block that guy. Well, now you can see it's starting to set up on the right side right here. So who has R5? Well, we were starting to think this guy should get R5. Well, that's a hard block if we're trying to seal this guy in here. So we make this sealer an R5 guy. So he'll come down and he'll retreat two yards to five yards and then he'll seal R5 in right here. The center is going to retreat and he'll kick L5. So he's got him. And then we'll retreat here 10 yards, 10 yards, and he'll have L4. And the left tackle will have L3. The scraper's sole responsibility, I'm talking about this guy can be whoever you want it to be. He's got one job. He gets in the shoot, and he's the lead blocker for the left returner. So you're looking. We don't even let these two dudes. We don't even count for those two du dudes in making a play. When it's a five and a five type deal, why? We're going this way. Okay, if you want to do that, you got to come through all this stuff, or you have to go, up. Oh, I'm not getting blocked, and then retreat all that way. So – does this get uh, a return every time for a touchdown? Absolutely not. Does it help you get set up for great field position for this year? Ron, it was the minus 42 after all said and done. When they kick it to us, we're at the minus 42. And that is that's that's decent right there. That's that's always one one big play and you're in their territory. That's right. I mean that that that's it. So I'm gonna show you some clips of this and yeah. uh, see if there's any questions. 
uh, before and, we get yeah, so coaches. We'll if you have any questions, put them in the chat right now while he go ahead and bring, I will remove this, go ahead and get the, uh, the huddle up and everything like that. Now, why did you go with the R's and not the L's? Like, is that can just, can you see the huddle? Yeah. Uh, no, you still have the, um, sh the, uh, whiteboard. Oh, I got to stop that. Yeah. And then here. All right. So what was your question? Why did you focus on the R, the R four and, and five and not the L's? Okay. That's a great question. One, I'm right-handed. So obviously I want to return to the right. <laughs> Most offensive coaches and you yeah, know this. You're, you're, you're absolutely coaches, right. You want to go to the right a lot. Um, can we flip that? Absolutely. How do we do that? We flip the guys to the other side. That's all we're going to do. So here are those five guys. If you want to flip it, just take those guys that are on the R and put them over there based on how this, how their kickoff team is. So there's teams that go four and six that I'll show you five and five and balance them up. Um, and what we found is when you start popping a bunch of them, they want to pooch it to you. So we get the ball when they pooch it at like the 35 yard line as a fair catch. Okay. And, and, I don't mean to jump, cut you off. We got some questions. So, as an OC, I'm tasked with kickoff return this year, and this looks amazing. You are absolutely right. Um, Coach Holder wants to know, what do you do if it's kicked to the right returner? Oh, that's a great question. I'll go back to the whiteboard. Okay. Let me go back to the whiteboard on that. Good question, Coach Holder. And, again, coaches, if you have any questions. I, yeah, I, I mean, felt like I said that like a radio personality right there, and I didn't mean to. If you have any questions, put them in the chat, and we will answer them. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, okay. Oh, this is ugly here. You can uh, um, clear it if you if you click the eraser. Yeah. And then the trash can, it clears all of it if right there. Oh, the my letter, my R1. or you can go ahead and just go down to eraser size. Yeah, and just do that. I don't know if it'll erase the. That's fine. I'll. I'll uh, here we go. It's not like yeah. Photoshop. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> why not? Why not? Right? I should have just done what you said a lot faster. I didn't know it, it got rid of the text as well. It's fine. Coaches are hard headed, right? Yes, yeah. we are. Yeah, we're hard headed. Okay. So I'm going to go to the right side real quick. I'm just going to put five, four, three, two, one, and then five, four, three, two. I'm all about simplicity. Okay. So if this is, y'all got these, right? Y'all know the center, right tackle, right guard. This will help. Uh, the sealer, the kicker, the doubler, the scraper, left, right returner. Okay, so if it goes here, even better, right? Let's say that three is the bad mamma jamma, so we're going to retreat and get three. Retreat, get four. We'll double three. Uh, I just drew that backwards. That should be a one. Two, my bad. Four, five, my bad. Um, what we'll end up doing with this one, so if it comes here and he catches it, you still have your sealer or your scraper, excuse me. All the L is going to do is come and check and make sure that the right returner catches the ball. And then if one comes down and he's out of the play, he becomes an extra lead blocker. If he gets in the mix, he's going to kick him. Same deal. Okay. If it's left or right return. And look, we have some that it goes to that returner. So I can show on film uh, what that's going to look like. Even better on from an end zone shot. Uh, okay. Let me go to that right now. We have another while you're getting that up. Uh, are you a fan of setting a wall return? Yes. When uh, we actually did a wall return modified based on a team that we played, and I'll show you the clip of that. Uh, so. Yes, I will also show you that. All right. Okay. And then the next question, what gives you the most issues with the return? Mm. The most yeah. issues. Yeah, go ahead. I would say getting the kicker to kick number two because he's coming on a dead sprint about getting the depth that he needs and get the, getting the kick um, and then stay on the blocks long enough. So sometimes we got to retreat farther uh, back or whatever, because I don't want them to engage too soon. 
I want them to wait on the guy to come and come down on him. So I guess that would be the two things. Um, you know, I, that's really good. What question. are you doing when you're watching film and you're breaking it down? What are the, I'm going to be honest. I don't watch special teams film. <laughs> like I'm going to be completely honest. I, I don't, but as someone that does this and like, this is your, your thing. What are you, what are two things you're looking for when you're watching film of your opponent special teams? Um, Man, one, I, are you, am I sharing this right now? Can you see yeah, that? Okay. There it is. Um, it's up. When I watch other teams' special teams, so obviously I just do the kickoff return. Okay. What I'm looking for is A, who's the double guy? First off the bat, like which one of these dudes is going to come down? Three or four? Okay. If it's two, then we can switch that up as well. But then I see how deep they kick it. And then what is their tendency if the ball's in the middle, ball's on the left hash, ball's on the right hash? Uh, if there's four, there's six. So there's a lot that goes into that. And like some days, uh, I'll look at it on Saturday afternoon and we'll go to Sunday meetings and I'll tell Coach, they was like, hey, this thing's going to go in the end zone about 95% of the time. He goes, so what do you want to do? I was like, uh, we can go four minutes kickoff return. And 99 times out of 100, they're going to kick in the end zone. They're going to kick in the end zone. Uh, but those those times that we get it, like there's a time, like if it's four and six, they're going to kick it to this hat. They're going to kick it this deep and let's go to this hash. If they go in the middle, they're going to go either left, right, or middle. So I'm tracking all the games that I can watch of this team's kickoff and then build a database for myself so I can tell our kids. So before we can go out there, I huddle up my kickoff return team and say, this is this is what you can expect. And then we go watch some instances this year. I was like, we need to go watch film on how these balls are going to be kicked. So they know what's going on. Like if we're on the, if they know the ball is going to be on the left hash, a lot of times the teams would go opposite hash, right. And pooch the ball over there. Yeah. So I'd want them to see that. So that's what we did. Okay. There's a lot of, a lot of breaking down film prior to, and then letting the kids know, Hey, this is what to expect. All right. And you got film for us. So let, let's see what, yeah, what you got. This is last year, uh, Bessemer Academy. So anyway, this would be the guy that we're going to kick, and then we're going to double three and four, and then here's one. So I'm going to let it play, and you kind of see this play out, and I'll stop it in between. Okay. So you can see them retreating right now. So they leave. Look, they're leaving two alone. So look, these two dudes, watch these two guys. They are not going to touch them. They're not going to touch him. They know not to touch him. He has four. He has three. There's your kick. Oh, that's so beautiful. And there's one. You see how they're running them outside? And then yes. we're not even worried about these two dudes. Like, we could care less. Like, y'all could, y'all can go outside and y'all go trick or treating. Y'all can do whatever. We ain't even touching you. And they're probably thinking, like, what in the world's going on? Yep. There's the kick. And see the R1? See how the R1 was trying to get in the mix? And there's the right returner? Yeah. So there's R1 right here. Trying to get in the fold. Boom. Just pick him up. There you go. That's it. Yeah. You're across the 50 right there. Yeah. Um, here it is from the end zone. I love watching it from the end zone. Just so you can see the blocking. So look, th those two dudes are like, wait a second, they're they're not even touching us. So these two dudes aren't even worried about them. There's the one to the right returner. Okay. So there's your L return guy making sure it's caught. And now he's spy he's spying R1. There's your kick. There's your R1. See, and in film, I remember telling Tyler this: like, if that guy's there. Leave. Go ahead and leave because he's already taken walker. himself out. And you can see it right there. Here's your double guy right here. Going and doubling. Getting in the shoot. All right, so we got some questions. Uh, Coach, Jared says we run something very similar. When it's kicked to the R returner, have you had him reverse it and hand it to the L? No. No. Okay. No, not at all. I just 
kickoff return is uh, the first offensive play is what we look at it. Like, how are we going to get set up for great field position? Um, they're high school football players. They're 16 years old. Uh, I don't like reverses when they go to just normal players that are on the offense, let alone two returners and guys running at them. Uh, so I don't want to even do that. I only want to hand the ball off. Uh, right. I do, do want to go to this. People are like, how how violent your kicker is supposed to be? So uh, kickers being like. We we might have lost them. I mean, <laughs> had some internet issues right there. Let me go ahead and text him. That is a great fist, though, that he's making right there. Um, I, I'm curious, by the coaches that are on here, how many of y'all actually are the special team coaches? Like, how many of y'all do special teams? This is the best clinic in December. Great job, Coach. I appreciate it. Coach just froze on us. Uh, let's. I'm sending him a text right now. You get knocked out. And how many of y'all just by while we sit here and wait till he comes back? How many of y'all do something like this? Like I'm gonna be honest, when we were doing um, special teams like this, we did a man block. We would just say, "Hey, you've got this man. You've got L1. You've got L2. You've got L3. Stuff like that." And you just go and block. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I have not heard of um this kind of gap scheme and this is amazing and he's back there you go hey you should have seen the face you got froze on it was hilarious but i was asking all the other coaches like who in here is special teams oh. because i was telling them i've never heard of this I'm like sorry. as you as you bring it up i've always heard we did man blocking like okay i have got l1 he has got l2 so on and so forth I've never heard of this gap scheme, and it just it freaking intrigues me. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I was getting. Yeah, that's fine, it. man. That's what I, I don't know where I left off. You were showing the back of that one play, and you were talking about the, the double team. Yeah, yeah, yes, the kicker, the kicker, the guy that's the kicker. Um, I say the kicker is the the K two guy. Uh, we're gonna kick number kick number two. So y'all saw this one, right? Yes, that's the what we were watching. Awesome. So we didn't, you didn't miss much it's right here. I, I just go and show how violent, uh, when we kick, uh, number two, watch this right here. Oh, that's a pancake. Yeah. That's, that's what we want from that. So here it is from the wide. I was wondering, I got real quiet and I was like, man, we're just amazed by it. I was wondering, I was like, what? So here we go again. That's from the wide. You can see how it all plans out, those two dudes. So three and 34 are like, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a second. They're not blocking us. So uh, here it is against Trinity Christian. All right, hold on. I have a, I have a coach from a question from Coach Sims. It says, uh, Coach, do you have starters on return? Seems like you have to have Absolutely. some dudes out there to sustain these blocks, et cetera. Coach Sims, absolutely. Uh, you know, if Alabama is going to put starters and they're the king of national or, or king of college football and yes, top yeah. in the SEC year in year out, and they put starters, uh, I think you need to make it important. If that's going to be the first play that you view as an offensive team, absolutely, um, they got to be starters. Okay, good question. So, uh, and if you are on Facebook watching this, uh, thank you. Right above, it's, uh, there's a link with StreamYards. If you could just click that, give StreamYards access so that we can see your beautiful face as you, you make us feel good about how this is the best clinic in December. Good job, Coach. I appreciate it. We have a lot of special teams uh, coordinators in here, so that is very good. Uh, I did a wall return until now. This is awesome. Look at that, Coach. You already got someone sold on this type of return. Um, Okay, so look, man, I'm going to show you some more. Like, this is this year. They were like, oh, they figured out what you're going to do. I was like, yeah. So, get I think, did, did we lose it again? We lost them again, guys. The, I'm telling you right now, they don't want you to know about this scheme because this scheme is freaking unbelievable. Uh, hold on. Let me text them again. <laughs> It might actually be because of the huddle. But huddle is like, listen, guys, we cannot let this out. This is freaking unbelievable. And uh, 
now because like I, I see a lot of y'all are saying right here where it is this we definitely run something uh very similar the kick block is great yeah it is because i can tell that they're not used to doing this like it's all one-on-one -on -one type stuff or the wedge how many of y'all actually run the double wedge we kind of ran that some a little bit too my first couple of years i never really understood this this just makes sense to me so let's see uh wish we had we spend more time on special teams. Yes, I agree. We actually, I don't know how many, just in the chat, how much time did y'all use on special teams, by the way? Hey, there he is. I was telling everybody it's because Huddle doesn't want us to know. I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, anyway. It's fine. A third time's the charm. It might It might be because uh, I, I honestly don't know. But let's, let's try it I again. Know, I got Wi-Fi all throughout my house, like two of those Orby things that are going crazy. So... Anyway, um, yeah, look, this is one of those things that when we started doing it and I started putting intentionality to it, it started to be a game changer for us offensively. So I got to show you some more. Um, we'll keep we'll keep doing it. Listen, I'm, I can roll with this. You can get knocked off. I will ask questions. You bring it back on. We can okay. do this over and over again because it really is a game changer. Are we good okay, here? Now, hold on. Why you why you bring that up? I just wanted to ask. How much time do you spend on? Is this like an everyday thing, or is this just like a one time, and that's it for the rest of the week? How do you do it? You're gonna laugh. We early preseason, early week one, two, three, four. We're getting about eight minutes of this. As the season progresses, and teams typically don't start kicking to us and pooching, uh, we'll scale it back to four minutes, um, two days a week. Good. Okay. So what do because uh, I see a lot of coaches, I asked, like, how much time do you spend, Coach Robinson, 20 minutes, two periods, about five, 10 minutes? Like, how much, 15 minutes of practice on special teams? How much do y'all do, five to 10? Do you do anything like that, or is it – like, what's your special teams period? Uh, so we'll kick PAT extra points for four minutes, and then we'll go into uh, – we're going to do kickoff every day, and we're going to do punt every day. The kickoff returns one of those things that, you know, I mean, our defense is top notch, and like there's three times that in one game, I mean, three games we got three kickoff returns. So one time I was working on these all one of these teams onside kick all the time, so we had to, you know, figure out how we're going to do that, and they kicked off one time to us. So you got a good defense, and Coach White does an amazing job with our defense. Uh, I look at him sometimes. I'm like, all right, uh, we only worked on this for eight minutes all week. Um, pretty sure you're going to shut them out. Yeah, I'm thinking. I was like, well, if you do that, we only get one shot, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's always nice. All right, so let's back to the film. Let's let's try this. Maybe if I take. Are you good? You still got me? I hope I'm still on here. I'm stupid because I took myself off and you couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So this is uh, Trinity Christian out of uh, Dallas, Deion Sanders' team. So here's first kickoff of the year. We have a new kick guy, and he's still trying to figure it out, right? So he's dancing with the guy, but you still get the double team, and you still get a return out of it. And that's – here's a right return. So you talked about that coach was talking about our left returner. He was just making sure that he's getting it. Making sure that he's getting it. And then he turns into a blocker. Boom. Boom. That's it's nice. First kickoff of the season. I mean, it's first kickoff of the season. You can see he get it timed up. 19 was the double guy. So if we miss him and he was their guy, boom, ceiling. And here comes the scraper. 22 is the scraper. You see him? Yeah, that's, that's it is what it is, man. Uh, here's another one. We always told our guys, you get a short kick, hey, take it and go to now. We're going to have it blocked up. So that's a short kick to our, that's our sealer guy. Get it and go with it, boy. There it is again. All right, real quick, what? Walk us through, like, who are you looking to put in those spots? Like, who's the sealer? Who are you looking for? Like, what kind of body and stuff like that? Okay. Obviously, um, I'll get off of this real quick. Obviously, the guy 
Uh, I'm going to start from the back and go forward. Okay. okay. So your runners are typically your running backs, uh, defensive backs. I want guys that uh, I say defensive backs. It's more, I want a running back type that can catch those types of uh, so receivers or stuff like that um, on your playmakers. I mean, come on now. You play Tech Mobile. You want your playmakers to have the ball. Get the Raiders and Bo Jackson. You're yeah, score. exactly. So that's what I look for on the back, guys. Uh, the kicker and the scraper uh, and the doubler, linebacker type guys. The sealer, more of a safety type that can be agile. And then I want skill guys across the top. I want guys that are going to block. So our, our our guy that was on the right right side was our free safety. Um, the other one was the rover. The center was the center guy was our H back. And our left guard and our left tackle, one was a running back and the other one uh, was a DB. Those are wow, so that is that is totally different than what I'm used to seeing. Like usually most most boys coaches, up front, right? Yeah, and coaches in the chat, do y'all do something similar? Do y'all put the big boys in front or do you do skills across the front? Just so in chat, just put big boys or skills and let me know because from 11 years, man, it, it's all been like big boys in the front. You got to think who's coming down on the kickoff team. Yeah. They're screaming eagles, man. They have one job. Like there's that one dude that he's like, I'm about to make my highlight tape for the weekend. I'm going to make this tackle. Um, and that's, I was like, if we're going to do that, we're going to put skill guys on the front. Plus, if you try to onside kick it, do you want an offensive lineman trying to catch an onside kick or a skill guy? Uh, for the novelty and the funness, I want offensive lineman just to see. <laughs> for you to be able to get the ball, you better yeah. go put skill guys there. So That's true. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, it's going to take a finesse type deal, uh, kick kick return, like you're doing, you're doing this, and you're like catching guys and doing this. Uh, watch the doubler right here. And this is first game of the season last year. All right, bringing it up. Can you see it? Yeah. And I, I'm going to be honest, I have an egg on my face because everybody in chat, all the coaches are like, skills. That is not where we have been. So watch this right here. You ready? Mm -hmm. Talk about doubling a guy and setting the tone for your, your offense, your kickoff return team. Boom. On the ground. Right here, Ooh. yeah, on the ground, and then there's that lane, man. I love it. That's it. Um, let me go to do you uh, have? I've had a couple of questions. Do you have any like trick plays off of this, or this this is just it and we're doing it? This is it, and we're doing well. We got some offs of it. Of like, do we want other guys to get the ball? Do we want to change the blocking scheme based on this return? This is our standard one. Okay. So come out of high water. We're run, we're doing this. So you have nothing like the the Music City miracle where you're doing this and then you're throwing it across the field and having them do. Okay. Eight minutes max when we get into season. I don't want to do anything different than what they're used to. I love it. I love it. So here we go. This is Corinth, four A state champs last year. They're six and four, and it's like, oh, right return. We're going to take this away, and a lot of people like kicking to their sideline. I was like, okay. All you R guys are now over here. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Yeah, let's go the other way. Let's go the other way, and we're going to seal it and kick it, and we're in the shoot. Here it is from the end zone. And that was one shoestring away from six. Yeah. So here we go. And you see how they're blocking downfield? There's yeah. a double team. So you want to see is do they get the double team? Absolutely they get the double team. Boom. Uh, our rag number number nine, uh, our defensive end. Um, he missed his block on the two and he's he came to the sideline. He goes, I knew it. I knew I missed it. I was like, Well, that's the guy that made the tackle. So here we are again. Oh man, got to speed it up for you. Just making sure I'm still, I'm still yeah, with you. you. Are. Good. So here we go again. They kick it way over there, right? Do your blocking assignments. Find the shoot. God, that's so nice. Right, here we go again against Park Lane. This is late in the season. 
Didn't kick it very deep, so we have to adjust where the ball is going to go. We kind of put them around the vicinity within five yards. There's the kick on. Look, this is beautiful. This is going back to the coach that asked if it goes to the right returner. Watch this block on R1. Boom, right there. It breaks it. Would you rather have, in a perfect world, a pooch kick or a deep kick for this type deep, of scheme? Deep. Okay. The pooch kick uh, pooch kick is great. I mean, it just means going to eliminate how much time we got to work. You're gonna, we're gonna fair catch it. Okay, uh, that was gonna be my next question. If you had like a pooch kick return or anything like that, are you just telling those guys just fair catch? Fair catch. Okay, just tell them fair catch. Uh, so here's one again, right returner. Make sure he catches the ball. Let me show you the one that uh, I was showing you earlier, where we could have housed it. Oh, that that have a vision. Yeah. So, guys, watch this right here. If he runs here, touchdown. So he's gone. You see how we're sealing it up? We're getting the double right there. They're kicking two. One doesn't come down as hard. And there you go. And it's just, we made it simple, Ron. And, and when we did, it was, you know, they're like, this guy's a sub. He's a sub on this. And he was like, what do I do? All I have to do is tell him, hey, you have uh, L3. Yes, sir. That's it. That's up. And you're speaking my language because that's why we get along so well is because we both love simple simplifying things. Yes. So and here it is. Yeah. And look, this is against Jackson Prep. This is our rival. I don't know who they are, but I'm I'm guessing the way you said that that they are good. They're really good. Uh, okay, their head coach was national coach of the year two years ago. Yeah, national high school coach of the year. That's halfway decent. That's halfway decent. Yeah, I mean, so we want to make it simple and let your kids play. All right. So my question: um, Did this did this sneak up on like they didn't know you were doing this, and then? you're going to have to have answers to that next year, or did the teams know you were doing this and they still couldn't stop it? Still couldn't stop it. This is what they do to answer it. Watch this. Fair catch, 35-yard line. Okay. So that's that's decent. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that all day. So that, that's where we are. Um, you know, it's not it's not one of these crazy things. And that's us in practice again. And that's how we practice it. We're going to walk through and make sure. So it's just like, you can go back to, to me. I'm going to take this off. Okay. This is, this is kind of how I approach receivers. Before you can go do anything full speed, you better walk. And then you jog. And then you can sprint. Same thing with this. They got to know what they're going to do. So I'm going to walk through. Here's how you block this guy. Here's how you do this. And here's the cool part of it. We didn't do it this year. We did it last year. I took the right side. Our head coach took the left side. Our D coordinator took the returners. And our offensive line coach took the kicker and the scraper. I mean, the kicker and the sealer. And then, you know, who's got the, the scraper? Nobody's got one job, right? Run in the alley and lead block. So I think if you get all your coaches in on the special teams, that also shows your kids how important it is. So we didn't do that this year, uh, maybe because we already knew the scheme and it was a little bit easier. And, you know, I think we, you know, we did the best we could with what we had and the COVID vial, like everything was really weird this year. Yeah, yeah. 2020 was we limited the coaches that were in contact with at that special team and all that stuff. And Yeah. One of those types. Totally understand. Now, here's the thing, coaches. Uh, please put your questions if you have any any more questions. Coach has like an in-depth course on this on CoachTube. And what I'm doing is I am going to be posting that in the chat. And then this will also, when you come back, because I know a lot of you will come back to see this. I know I will. I'm, I'm going to shoot this off to my head coach. I'm, because, again, I've never known about this. Like, I did. Special teams is not my wheelhouse. I'm the the first to admit I'm always either the wedge or pick off a man. Not this. This is this is amazing. So coaches, while we're still here, 
because I'm old and I have to get in bed in a little bit for, for my beauty sleep. As you can tell, I'm not getting enough sleep. Um, Maybe if questions. I get enough sleep, my hair will grow back. <laughs> so here we go. What about teams that kick? Uh, good Lord. How? Kick? Let me try that again. What about teams that kick deep corner or have multiple ball guys? Um, you know, typically. So, yeah, go ahead. Asking. Uh, Rob, that's a great question. And uh, so here's if you kick the kick deep corners like they're they're trying to take away they're kicking those four and they're pinning you deep inside between the hash and the numbers. That's where the coaches typically want to kick between the hash and the numbers. Right. And they want to pin you deep. Uh, they're going to normally have four guys on that side. So guess where I'm going to return it to that side. I want to return it to that side. Um, and they have multiple ball guys from what I've studied and being a kicker in college. Um, we normally had one ball guy that was of those four. Another one was contained. Another one was a lane guy. So you're typically going to have that one ball guy screaming down. He's probably going to be R3 or R4, the guy either on the hash or right off the hash closest to the numbers and screaming down. So that's going to be our double guy. Um, and the guy, that, I mean, alignment wise, um, that's beautiful. Like I, we ran this one time on our kickoff team and it's, it's, they're a deep, deep to deep left. Um, type team and they want to kick between the hash and the numbers and they want to cut off like 80% of the field. Well, that's great. I'm going to reuse the 20% and block up those four guys and leave two away. So I got 11 or excuse me, I got 10 guys on your nine or your eight. If you take the kicker out and that's, I'm banking on my guys knowing that they have one simple job. One guy's got to kick the number two. We got to make sure that one now, if one runs himself all the way down and forgets to contain, You've taken – now I've got seven guys that I'm dealing with to my ten. So I like my odds there. Um, if they go five and five, they typically uh, are going to kick it deep right or deep left, and the ball is going to be in the middle of the field. So, there, I mean, there's so many scenarios. And, uh, Rob, you got my cell phone. You can call me, and we can talk about this, uh, and I can help you out with this. But it's – I've gone into a lot of conversations with other coaches on how I can make this effective – to where it's evolved, even from this. This was just bare bones of it. Um, if you want to know more about it, hit me up on Twitter. Give me a DM. If you have my cell phone, uh, call me. I can give you some more stuff that's in depth. But this is the bare bones. If this is like, I got to show this to our head coach. This is something we need to install. This is day one. Like this is you should. This could. This should. Sell, this should sell your head coach on this because um, it sold ours, and he was like, "I love it." You know. So all right, and coach like again. That. If you want to get more in depth, because coach goes in more depth than just 30 minutes, there is his course right there on Coach Tube. Coach John says he's a strength and conditioning coach or special teams. Strength and conditioning. Good Lord, I need to get to sleep. At uh, Merrimack College for four years, all skill guys, no biggies. I mean, I'm showing how ignorant I am today because that, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. I want to go back to what you said that you said you studied Army. Air Force and Purdue, were there any reasons why you studied those teams or those just, you know, I think more or less for the the fact that an army did the best job of it. They're, they have to be exceptional in the special teams game because of the offense they run and they're, they, you know, what they do. Right. Yeah. So, and they're, they're going to do a, a job. I'm not saying that, Alabama does a bad job. I'm not saying that but they have in, in the world of college football, they have less than what the Alabama's. Yeah, the they have guys. less. How do they do more with less? And I looked at alignments and, and how they block things up. And it just army was the one I think we really looked at. And then I dove in deep with army on like how they got their guys to do the blocking scheme as far as how they set it up. So why is it five? And then, two are stacked and then the, the two on the outside, then we modified that. So, you know, that there was no rhyme or reason, I guess, to it, but they do more with less because of a military academy. All right. And, and every year we put new wrinkles in. Do you have something like uh, – you don't have to tell us, or you can. Uh, what's like something you're, you're mulling over right now because – Football coaches, we are always tinkering, especially in the offseason. Do you have something in mind with this that you're going to, you want to, 
you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you do because give it away. Gonna... No, if they want it, shoot me a DM. I got okay, it's, but but that's that's well, that's what I'm saying. Like you have something in mind that you yeah, well, we're, since a counter. Okay, maybe. I'm working on I'm working on how do we handle the pooch kick, and uh, Ivan Mason has intrigued me. I met him in chalk war with Matt Arafat during the quarantine, and uh, he was like, "How do you handle your pooch kicks, and how do you get a return out of that?" And I said, "Well, we just fair catch it." Well, the more I looked at it, I was like, how can we turn that fair catch into more yardage? So there's something that I'm working on is dealing with the blocking scheme of uh, of stuff. And, uh, you know, Jason, man, thanks for tuning in. Jason um, Wilkes at uh, the Kerry High School. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, the what yard lines are you placing the positions ideally? Okay. Great question. I want to go back to the video and show you because okay. I think that's going to be better. Um, let me share it. Uh, Chrome tab, football, boom. Let me go to an end zone shot. All right. And one of the Coach D says that he does a two man trap on Pooch. Oh, nice. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about it. Okay. So front line guys, I told you I was, he was like around the 48 to 46. I want these guys back. Um, so he's on the top of the number. He's on the hash. He's always over the ball. So if they put the ball here, I want that dude over the ball. Um, and then this guy's on the hash. This guy's on top of the number. As we go back, the kicker and the scraper. So this is the kicker. He's at the 35. And I put the sealer at the 25. Remember, he's the one that's got to go get the play side number five. Okay. And look, this is starting wide receiver from last year. Uh, had, I think, 48 catches for over 1,000 yards receiving. And he's on our kickoff return team. Uh, this is our, this one of our team. linebackers. Um, this doubler over here is a receiver from last year. This guy right here is Joe Perkins, who's at FIU right now. Uh, Sam Polis, All-State, All-Star player this year. I mean, I'm just telling you, we're, we're putting dudes on this uh, starting defensive back, and the guy that over here returning is uh, starting running back, starting wide receiver. So we're putting dudes on there to answer that question. So 35, 25, based on the kick is where I put these guys, and the kick, the scraper and the doubler are on the 30. And I go into depth and more uh, on the on the course of it. But as you can see, they're going to get depth. And he's finding R5. He's getting the kick. I mean, that's what we're doing. That's nice. And you can play with the depth of it. I'll uh, I'll come back. You can go you can play with the depth of it. Obviously, if a if a team doesn't kick it as deep, you want to scoot your team up. Um, the main thing I tell our guys is on the front line make sure the ball's kicked. And I can't reiterate that enough. We got caught with the pants down against um, Jay on the third game of the season. And our front guy tried to leave too early. He saw it, tried to redirect. And uh, they got a good bounce on it on that little, I don't know, bunt kick or whatever. I don't know. Where they just kind of hit the ball 10 yards uh, with what the Saints did to the Colts, right? Okay. When they kind of hit the thing and the yeah. kicker follows it. and. Anyway, they got us with our caught us with our pants down right there with our center guy. But I was like, "Do not leave until that ball is kicked over your head. Like, just it is kicked over your head. So uh, you're going to have time to retreat and get to your landmarks. If you're the R three or R four, you're going to have a double guy, so you're going to have help. So it just it works for us, man, and we love yeah, it. Yeah, man, looks freaking awesome. And again, coaches, if you want. To learn more, there's the uh, it's in the link right there. If you're watching this on Facebook, just leave a comment K uh, KO, and I will shoot you the link for that as well. Because I know uh, this is kind of wonky when it comes to Facebook. So if you're on Facebook watching it in the group or on my profile, just go ahead put KO, and I'll reach out and shoot you that information. Um, Coach, thank you so much for being here, man. I love you talking. Are, with you, man. Let me tell you real quick. You know what it turns into, and a lot of coaches are looking at this gaps game. You're running power. Yeah, that's awesome. You're getting a double. You're getting a kick, and you're getting the wrap. So that's what we're doing. We're running power on the kickoff return, which is you – know, It's nice. 
it's it's fun i know it that. is nice man and i love how you said it is so simple because you can just put a kid in and be like hey you're you're blocking this guy right here l3 that's yeah, it that's Not it treat here you got him you got to steal him no if we don't this run we're going to kick this guy man it's it's high school football and let your kids be successful um i want to give a huge shout out before we get off real quick go uh, for it man logan dotson he's the wide receiver coach at oxford high school and uh he implemented some of what I did drill wise with his guys. And I, I followed him the whole season and man, they lost a heartbreaker Friday night uh, on a two point conversion to, uh, to lose the state championship. Uh, anyway, man, up and coming, you talk about wide receiver coaches in the state of Mississippi and, and he's one of them, Logan dots. And he's got those dudes, uh, doing some good things at, uh, Oxford high school. So just kudos to him. I followed him the whole season. Um, Got a cool old bolt hat now. I'm, a, I'm an Oxford fan uh, when it comes to, to public school in Mississippi. Um, just, you know, with him and uh, Coach Cutcliffe. So Chris Cutcliffe is David Cutcliffe's son. At okay. Purdue, their head coach. But uh, I know Logan really well, and he did a phenomenal job this year, uh, not only with his players, but the culture that he's, that he's building with them. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to say? Merry Christmas. There we go. There we go. All right. And hopefully, coaches, you have a tree just like the one back there. How long did it take your wife to put that tree up? Uh, a day. Day and a half, maybe. Okay. Okay. I don't know. What, what, I what, what did, did, it was up. All I had to do was get the tree That's it. put up, and then she decorated. All right. So, All right. How many trees do you have in your house? Just that one? One. one. She wants two. We got two. We got two. Yeah, she wants two. So I think, got two. I think we'll probably buy it. When uh, they go on sale, right after Christmas, don't they go on sale? I'll be like, "Hey, baby, I love you. You can get that next year when you get them on discount after the Christmas." Not, All right, right, last question. I promise. Yeah, Have you watched a Hallmark movie yet? Have you gotten to that part of the Christmas no. holiday spirit? No. You're, look, you're un-American if you don't watch uh, Christmas Vacation. I've already watched. Yeah, well, dude, we've already watched Christmas Vacation, Home Alone One, Home Alone Two. We've already oh, knocked those out. Those are. I think we had a we had Home Alone One and Two and Three on repeat for like a week. It was just one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. Um, and then Christmas Vacation came on last night. Uh, my wife has still not watched the whole thing all the way through. And what you gonna do? My wife was like, I want to watch it. And I go, okay, I don't know. It's on Hulu. We don't have Hulu. She goes, we'll buy it off of Amazon. So we bought it off of Amazon. We sat down. We we let the kids do whatever they wanted. And we watched it. It's it's It holds up. It's one of those movies that's always funny. And you find something. This is what I like. I know yeah, every coach is like, shut the hell up. You find <laughs> like something new in the joke, a new nuance that you didn't notice before. Okay. And the one I found was um, when the the neighbors were like, uh, what are you going to do with that Christmas tree that big? And, you know, he's like, bend over and I'll show you. And he's like, what? And he's like, that's not doing it. He's like, no, I wasn't talking to you. Talking about uh, the wife. And I was like, I, my wife and I looked at it and we're like, we never got that joke. It just flew over our heads and now we get it. And it's one of my favorites. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So you, you have some love right here. Logan, appreciate you, Coach Weaver. You're the man. Good stuff tonight. Shout out. There you go. You got some shout outs going on. Yeah. We will Gatlin coach D line for us last year. Sure did. All right. Coach Weaver's the man. You, th there we go, coach. I appreciate you coming on, man. We need to get you back on. I want to talk some more about all the stuff you're doing. Maybe, maybe, you know what? Let's next time let's, let's do it. Uh, leadership. Cause I know you're really big into that and everything like that. So we've talked about yeah, your stuff. Yeah. So we've done offense. We've done special teams. The next time you come around, we're going to talk about some culture and some leadership stuff. Cause that is something that uh, I need to get better at. I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. Yeah, there's and look, we can talk about the ARB. We can talk about their call signs. We can talk about uh, the notes, all the things that uh, that go into leadership. What makes a captain a captain? Like, you know, he's a captain. Well, how does he get there, and what is he going to be able to do? So we can talk about that as well. Um, but yeah, anybody that wants any information um, about our wide receiver stuff and how we do pregame uh, at Coach Weaver MRA, and uh, shoot me a DM. And Ron, I appreciate you, man. You. Uh, Work tirelessly. The only cool thing is you've had back to back people with bald heads. Me and Joe Daniel. Yeah, that's it, man. You know, I, it's getting close. I'm about. I have to shave. You know how I always go ebbs and flows. So I'm gonna do yeah. that, man. Yeah, mine's always ebbs. It's always gone. Yeah, 
It's There's no flow. There's never any flow. This is going to sound weird, but you have a, an amazingly like round head. You don't have me. I have like dents. I try to hide it in the light and everything like that. Not you, man. You look good with it. So I'm jealous. Not, I'm jealous. You're yeah, doing by giving me a bald head, I guess. <laughs> all right, coach. And, and all you coaches that are here, thank you so much for being here and for tuning in. Sure. And until next time, let's continue to match the spread, score points, and have fun. We will see y'all 